Today, we'll review Batman Arkham City and give away a $1,300 gaming laptop from Alienware. Plus, an exclusive preview of SSX and the latest on Assassin's Creed Revelations multiplayer. X-Play starts right now. Hello and welcome to X-Play, the weird uncle of video game shows. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb. Today, the epic-tober pandemic spread with more exclusives and another big giveaway. That's why I feel funny. Coming up, one lucky viewer will win another Alienware gaming laptop. Epictober has made us generous and drunk with power. Then, an exclusive preview of EA's SSX. You get all the details about the snowboarding game's treacherous terrain. Plus, a multiplayer preview of Assassin's Creed Revelations, which promises more online stabbings. And later, we've got an exclusive hands-on demo of Zombie Apocalypse 2. You're going to see brand new gameplay from this four-player downloadable title, as well as the debut of a new trailer. But first, it's time to step into the cowl of the world's greatest detective. You like that word, cowl? I do. Two years ago, Batman... Cowl. Two years ago, Batman Arkham Asylum stunned the gaming world in the best possible way. Nobody had expected it to be that good. Or have that much cowl. And now we've already got an ambitious sequel in stores, Arkham City. Does it live up to everyone's wildly overblown expectations? Find out in our review. Surprise! In Arkham Asylum, you wore the cowl and used the gadgets. But in Arkham City, you are the damn Batman. In the years since the events of Arkham Asylum, Gotham City has made the clearly brilliant decision to fence off a chunk of its real estate and dump all the criminals and murderously insane people into it, calling the place Arkham City. When Bruce Wayne protests, he is captured and tossed into the Escape from New York-style zone by classic villain Dr. Hugo Strange, who is overseeing it all. A quick bat suit delivery gets Bruce ready to clean up the town. Did it arrive, sir? This will not be a quick or easy task. Arkham City is a sprawling, gothic industrial concrete jungle, and you can traverse it freely using Batman's grapple and gliding abilities. Just about every Batman character you can think of is in this game. From the big names like the Joker, You left me to die. To the guys only comic book nerds will know, like Calendar Man and Azrael. All of them come to brilliant life thanks to one of the best voice casts ever assembled. Fear. That's how we get respect. Several of the major villains don't even appear unless you follow their side quest paths, which are often so fully fleshed out that they're hard to tell from the main storyline. While Arkham Asylum had a Metroid flavor to its design, Arkham City has a bit more Zelda mixed in. The city itself functions as an overworld of sorts, with tons of side quests and secrets to find. The buildings you visit are basically dungeons, and they contain level design and gameplay similar to the Asylum. You get all you loved about the first game with tons more content layered on top. It's just all so well put together. The gadgets are fun and useful. The combat flows even better than before. Grappling and gliding through the beautifully twisted architecture of the city makes you feel just like the Dark Knight himself. Riddler's trophies require real puzzle solving to get much of the time. Plus, Riddler has his own Saw-style puzzle sequences. Is that really there are opportunities in the story to play as Catwoman, who has her own way of getting around the city. 36 challenge maps let you hone your skills and compare scores with friends. The controls and interface are polished to a gleaming sheen of joy. Batman Arkham City is one of the most ambitious sequels ever attempted, and it is so well made we're not entirely sure it wasn't programmed by alien wizards. Or maybe the folks at Rocksteady are just the Batmen and women of game development. Five brutal beatings out of five. Isn't that information supposed to be confidential? So, like, here's the deal, man. I because it's a Batman game, I would have given it like a seven out of five. Like, I want to be Batman so bad. If my family was rich, I would have married my, I would have murdered my parents like 25 years. And, ago. and the thing is, where you know, Arkham Asylum got so close, and it was the best you'd ever seen about trying to be Batman. This really does it. What the open world does, being up on a high space, swooping down, just kind of beating up random bad guys. It just feels like that's that's the power fantasy that Batman's about. You know, you know, he's quiet in the dark, and when he punches, it hurts. Yeah, and look, in a game like this, when you have this much kind of 
kind of content that's been generated over the last 60 years. If you're gonna tell a story with voice acting, do it right. Yes. And this is probably the best voice acting of any game ever. And then it's also, there's so many voices. I think the big thing that everyone didn't like about the original Arkham Asylum is that you found all those cool cards with these really strange and obscure villains in it, mm -hmm. but there's so few villains that are actually in the game. Mm -hmm. Now, this one crams in just about every villain I can think of. I think it's important to point out too that they crammed all these villains in, but it wasn't like Spider-Man 3 cramming villains in. Right. It was, this actually makes sense. These villains are taking over these parts of the city. Exactly. It's all organic, yeah. it makes total sense. And there's a lot of incentive to, to play through these side missions because you don't even get to experience some of these villains unless no. you're doing these side missions. I think one of the greatest benefits to the game, but the one thing I would say is that I found that it, it doesn't introduce you to all those components very elegantly. Mm -hmm. And there, there are times where you're so overwhelmed with options right at the beginning mm -hmm. and you don't know what you can or what you can't do, it can become a little bit paralyzing. But once you kind of get over that hump and you kind of see what the rhythm of the game is like, you're gonna be so grateful for how much is actually made available in it. Right, and here's the deal. Look, nobody told Bruce Wayne how to be like an eight-year-old orphan, and he turned into Batman. So deal with it, people. That's 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 really sage and, 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 and well thought out. Mm -hmm. Why, thank you, Blair. You're welcome for that. Let's go over to Morgan. Some beautiful advice from Blair Herder. All right, thanks, guys. It's been five years since EA released a console SSX game, and it's about time. We needed something to wipe away any traces of Sean White snowboarding from our memory. The simply named SSX features helicopter drops, wingsuits, and a variety of different environments where you can do ridiculous tricks. Here is an exclusive preview. I'm Todd Batty, Creative Director on SSX. I'm Jeff Coates, Environment Art Director for SSX. This is part one of the SSX Massive World video series. Let's just jump right into our first region, the Himalayas. So the Himalayas are really about two very distinct different styles. At the lower altitudes, it's all about the Great Wall of China. You're going to be able to jump over that, ride down it, grind along the edge of it. The statues, the prayer flags, all things that give that region a unique sort of look. At the higher altitude, though, the Himalayas is one of the most gnarly, epic regions in the world. The deadly descent is something we call thin air. So here, the terrain is much more craggy and rough, and it makes it really difficult to get down the mountain quickly. But that's something you're going to be trying to do before you run out of oxygen. So the Himalayas overall have these two amazingly contrasting styles that we think make it an incredibly rich experience. Our next region is Alaska. And you know, when we look at Alaska, Definitely one of the most iconic landmarks even in the world is the Alaskan Pipeline. So we thought it'd be really cool to build a gigantic SSX version of the Alaskan Pipeline that you could ride and grind on top of these huge pipes. So in Alaska, you start by going down these crazy ridge lines that open out into this valley and there you see the Alaskan Pipeline. Now you can get up on the pipeline, ride down it, avoid avalanches, jump off and get back on again. It takes you all the way down through the valley down to the finish line. So in Alaska, you're literally going to have snow crumbling underneath of your board, and every run poses huge risks of avalanches. Overall, I think Alaska provides an incredibly unique gameplay experience across the board. So next up, we have Siberia. You know, Siberia stands in stark contrast to the Himalayas and to Alaska, definitely one of our darker environments. So Siberia is one of my favorite tracks from a visual standpoint. It's got a really oppressive, stormy feel to it. You'll be going down the mountain. When you come around the corner, you're going to come out into a, an abandoned nuclear plant. There's going to be lots of opportunities for big tricks, big air, all kinds of stuff. It's one of our widest maps. There are literally hundreds of different ways to get down the mountain. But we couldn't talk about Siberia without talking about ice, because that's what the deadly descent is in Siberia. And all of the maps and all of the tracks and all the mountains you're going to find in Siberia have very little snow. The ice definitely brings a completely unique wrinkle to the region of Siberia. So that wraps up part one of our Massive World video series. Keep an eye out for part two, where we're gonna go through Patagonia, Antarctica, and New Zealand. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Okay, after the break, we will read your cries for help in the X-Play inbox. Plus, one lucky viewer will take home a gaming laptop from Alienware. Then we've got a preview of Assassin's Creed Revelations multiplayer and an exclusive hands-on demo of Zombie Apocalypse 2, because the first one wasn't apocalyptic enough. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I am holding the show's iPad, which I totally didn't steal from a guy at Starbucks who was writing a really crappy script about a movie that'll never get made. You know, seriously, on this legitimately purchased iPad, I have your emails. It's time for the X-Play Inbox.
All right, our first question comes from Myron. Ooh, guys, it's the first real name we've ever had on this show. That's pretty cool. Have Adam or Morgan ever had the yellow light of death on their PS3s? Why doesn't Sony tell us that the old fat PS3 will die? I have some bad news. Everything dies. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. There are things things come to an end, um, like like the wire, which <laughs> is one of the things that didn't deserve to have that. Um, I, 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 I have the original PS3. We Never all died. we all here have the original yeah. PS3 because we all went out and got them at the exact same time. And I think I don't. I, I, they, they I think I'm on my fourth Xbox, and, literally, and I still have my same PS3. And you know what? I, I know there are failures, as there are yeah, with, with many things, but if you look at old Sony products, like a Walkman, uh, PS3 is doing pretty well, I gotta say. Remember the PS2? Oh, yeah. I think I had four of those as well. Yeah, so uh, that, I think that's why Sony's not talking about it. It's the one thing they're doing pretty well at. <laughs> Walkman reference, nice. Next, Andre writes, Now that I've played L.A. Noir, all games seem stone-faced and emotionless. Do you think the technique uh, used to create the realistic expressions will ever become a standard in gaming? 14 Bondi. I know, I know. <laughs> Half of their members can't even get paid. And now <laughs> they've ruined everyone for gaming because they made a good game. I think this is a problem that we see a lot, that when someone does one thing, yeah. it becomes, oh my gosh, I love oranges. I hate all the rest of fruit. Uncharted strikes me as having remarkable animations. I think there's more than enough examples out there. And uh, what L.A. Noire did, I don't think would work in most games. I also think there's a little bit of uh, Uncanny Valley in L.A. Noire. Oh, no, I think there's... Some, some faces worked better than other faces. I mean, it could do eye animations and the muscles underneath the eyes, yeah. but it also um, really made some some people who I guess are ugly in real life look just as ugly in the game. Next up, Xavier asks, oh, this is an interesting one. Is Assassin's Creed Revelations the end of the entire franchise? Are they ready to stop making money? No. Nope. No. I, actually, Ubisoft's been more open. Do you know how coy so many publishers yeah. are like, oh, we don't know if we're going to have a sequel to our successful game. They've said it's a, it's a, it's a yearly installment. Which I think is great. I mean, having being able to have different characters in different locations in the same sort of meta universe really makes yeah. them able to have fresh ideas in a, in a And also, if you paid attention to the narrative, next year's 2012. And if you think they ain't going to try to double down on that particular date in that <laughs> franchise, you're kind of silly. So true. All right, well, viewers, thank you so much for all of your questions, and double thank you to those who actually proofread their emails. Remember, you can be a part of this wonderful segment by writing to xplay at g4tv.com. Don't send us any messages about the boner pills. We already got hundreds of those, and we've ordered some, and they don't work. We had the pills? It's time once again for an epic giveaway. Today's prize is worth a whopping 1300 bucks. That's a lot of those pills, and that's more than an intern's life. Absolutely. So we are sending one lucky viewer Alienware's M14X Extreme Gaming Laptop. It has got a 14-inch HD screen and enough juice to take on any modern title. Now, don't be landlocked with your PC game. Right. Play the old Republic on the toilet. Do some raiding in a McDonald's. Yeah. Beg for Team Fortress 2 hats at the office. This Alienware rig will let you do all of those things. If you want a shot at winning this laptop, all you have to do is go to our website, g4tv.com slash epictober. Check out those official rules while you're there. And don't put this off like it's homework yeah. or hiding that hooker's body. The contest ends tomorrow at noon Pacific, so enter sooner rather than later. And if you are going to play games on the toilet, make sure you put a towel on your thighs because it gets like really hot under that computer and... I got scars. After the break, we've got an exclusive hands-on demo of the downloadable Bloodbath Zombie Apocalypse 2. Plus, find out why putting a knife in the back of someone's neck is stupid fun in our multiplayer preview of Assassin's Creed Revelations. We'll be right back. I'll be coming for you. Enjoy this power while you have it. You're getting reckless. Facebook's redesign may be a total disaster, but our X-Play page isn't. Just go to facebook.com slash X-Play and click like. All right, one of the biggest surprises in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood didn't come from the game's story, but the multiplayer. It is a unique online experience that rewards intelligent, careful players and will return in Revelations this November. Here is a preview. Assassin's Creed Revelations is coming our way in a few weeks, and X-Play's got all the details on the multiplayer. No assassin should ever work alone. We spoke with the Assassin's Creed live team producer for the Revelations. When we developed Brotherhood, uh, we really wanted to have a multiplayer that really stuck to the core values of Assassin's Creed. 
And with the warm welcome that we got, we realized that that was something that we really nailed down. There were some features that we felt we really need to work. One of them being the storyline. Although story is very a core part of the solo, we didn't have that much depth in the story in the multiplayer. So we added more in Revelation. With Revelation, what we're going to be doing is you're going to be specifically singled out as a key member of the Templars in training. And they're going to let you in on company secrets. And you're going to be able to see kind of behind the scenes look at why Abstergo is the way they are and why they're doing the kind of things you've seen them do in the solo campaign. It's no surprise that new modes have been added to multiplayer. We're taking arcade modes that are very popular in multiplayer and we're adding them to Assassin's Creed. So one of the modes is our take on Capture the Flag. The enemy stole your artifact. What's happening is that we're switching when you're going through your opponent's camp, you become the target. When you switch back to your camp, you become the attacker. So it's a traditional capture of the flag, but with the core Assassin's Creed multiplayer gameplay. Your artifact is back at your base. Another mode that should be popular is deathmatch. Basically, the idea is to single out your target in the crowd, so visually there's only one instance of that target, and it allows you to experiment the controls. And then once you've kind of mastered the deathmatch, you're probably in better position to start playing the more hardcore modes. We will be anticipating Assassin's Creed Revelations with arms wide open this November 15th. And that game comes out, and that's the last time we see Morgan for months. After the break, we've got an exclusive hands-on demo of Zombie Apocalypse 2 and a brand new trailer. Yes! There can be multiple zombie apocalypses, people. Apocalypse. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You know what's worse than a zombie apocalypse? A second zombie apocalypse. And you'd think we'd be prepared. In the downloadable game Zombie Apocalypse 2, Never Die Alone, you'll slaughter the undead with up to three other friends, and it's gonna be messy. Adam has got an exclusive hands-on demo. Zombie Apocalypse, Never Die Alone brings the dual-stick zombie shooter back to consoles with even more bloody mayhem. Grab a friend and some shotgun shells as you battle through the hungry horde of undead. Lock and load, and aim for the head. I am so happy to be joined by Alex Antone from Konami to talk about Zombie Apocalypse Never Die Alone. That's this right. The follow-up to Zombie Apocalypse, which came out about two years ago, correct? Yep, Zombie Apocalypse came out a couple years ago, and uh, with, with the new game, Never Die Alone, we basically tried to take all the things that people really enjoyed about the original and, and build upon them by adding some new functionality and cool wrinkles in the gameplay. So what happens in the course of this game and who are the four characters that you control? Well, you have, you have four different characters kind of based around four different archetypes. You have your brawler, which is Death Money. He's a British rapper. Uh, you got Father Bill, who is more of a healer type character. Um, you have Jeremy from Pure Onage, who uh, is kind of an all-around balanced character. And the final character is the young lady. Yes, Alma. She's kind of the machine specialist, and she's actually the one who's uh, building all of the machinery and weaponry that appear in the game. If that wasn't enough, there's also special abilities that all four characters have. Well, like, That's what, right. What That's can they right. do, and what kind of regulates how frequently they can do that? What you're supposed to do is fill up these vials here, which basically says uh, when you can use your special ability. So the more zombies and they you fill kill, up the blood. So yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. The more blood you amass over the course of the game, the, the better you can, or more often you can use your abilities. And Jeremy uh, shoots four times as fast. Uh, Alma puts up this turret that comes in quite handy. We're seeing you know, four characters on screen. Obviously four player co-op, but this yeah. is balanced so that you can play alone, but you're not going to be playing all by yourself inside the game. Yeah, the, the, the best experience is definitely still a multiplayer, but we wanted players, even if they were playing by themselves, to feel like they were part of a team and it was kind of that co-op experience. So, Zombie Apocalypse is coming out on October 25th on PSN, 26th for Xbox Live Arcade, right. but we're not done yet. We have an exclusive trailer for Zombie ah, Apocalypse right. Never Die Alone, so... We interrupt this trailer for a special alert. Do 
Goodbye. Konami. Tomorrow on X-Play, grab three friends because we've got a review of the four-player co-op platformer Ratchet & Clank All for One, plus an exclusive look at the gory Lord of the Rings War in the North, and a cheat for Gears of War 3's Beast Mode. If you want a shot at winning an Alienware gaming laptop or any of our Epictober giveaways, just go to our website. That website is g4tv.com slash Epictober. Oh, that's it. That well, was Epic October. People might forget. I know. I, I did. I'm glad. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for watching X-Play. You're so smart.